for number 12. So it's hardly Harry Potter, is it? Good day everyone and welcome back to my channel First World Traveller and welcome back to my Japan playlist and more specifically welcome to Hakata train station in Japan. Now let me give you a scenario. You're planning a trip to Japan. What is the one thing you are most apprehensive about other than the language barrier obviously? Well let me tell you at least in my case it was train travel and getting around Japan. This video is about the Japan Rail Pass. Now when you're planning a trip to Japan, everyone will tell you Japan Rail Pass is the only thing to do, the only way to get around Japan. Well, in some cases that is true. However, you've probably gathered from the thumbnail of this video that I have not got a Japan Rail Pass. As I cover my head from the barrage of travel people, that will tell me I'm insane. I am slightly insane, however, not in this case. So the aim of this video is to allow you to make a more informed decision about whether you should get a Japan Rail Pass or not. What I'm going to do is give you three pros and three cons, advantages or disadvantages, of the Japan Rail Pass. Then I will tell you what I've done and why I've done it. So, let's go! Okay, fast forward 24 hours, I'm now at the Hiroshima Atomic Bomb Dome. I'm not here to talk to you about that. It's time for the pros and cons. So, pro number one. The Japan Rail Pass allows you to travel for various durations, 7 day, 14 days and 21 days. Pro number two, the Japan Rail Pass is valid on any Japan rail lines throughout Japan. And pro number three, basically the Japan Rail Pass is stress-free. If you've got a Japan Rail Pass before you get here, you don't have to worry about, oh my God, how am I gonna get a train? Have I got enough money? Have I got enough cash on me if I haven't got a bank card? You name it, it's simpler to get a Japan Rail Pass if you're concerned with having minimal stress. Okay, on to the cons. Con number one. As I said, a Japan Rail Pass maximum duration is 21 days, however, if you are in Japan for longer, for example, like me, I'm in Japan for about 35 days, therefore, realistically, is a Japan Rail Pass the right thing to do? Because, effectively, I'll have to get two, one for 21 days and one for 14 days, and I'll go on to the costs later on. Con number two. As I said, the Japan Rail Pass allows you to travel on any Japan Rail line. However, if you've done your research, you will know that Japan Rail is not the only rail line in Japan. Well, I've moved because some weirdo sat right next to me and tried to start talking to me. Anyway, yes, Japan Rail is not the only rail line in Japan. There's also local lines and some areas of Japan are not covered by the Japan Rail Pass. So potentially you may have to pay extra for these parts of your journeys if you get a Japan Rail Pass. And con number three, cost. The Japan Rail Pass is extremely expensive. I'll come to figures in a second. And potentially your trip could be a lot cheaper if you don't get one. Right, before I go on to what I've done and why I've done it, there's two things you need to look at before you come to Japan. Go to the Japan Rail website. You can actually put in your route to the website and it will tell you whether it's worth getting a Japan Rail Pass, which is brilliant. Also, you can download this wonderful app, Hyperdia or Hyperdia. I don't know which one you call it, but I'm calling it Hyperdia. This is brilliant. You can put in your journey to this and it will tell you the cost. You can also select on the drop down box whether you want to have a reserved or non reserved seat. I found that generally this app is very accurate. In actual fact, a lot of the trips have come out cheaper than what it says on this app. So, double bonus. So, yeah, download these apps and go to that website before you get here. Right, so what does the Japan Rail cost? It costs 59,530 yen for a 21-day pass. This is the equivalent of 432 English pounds. Extremely expensive. If you want to get a 14-day pass, this costs 46,390 yen, which is the equivalent of 332 English pounds. Still very expensive. And if you want to do a longer trip like me, 35 days, you'd have to get a 21-day pass and a 14-day pass, which comes to 105,000 yen and over 700 pounds. Ridiculous. So what did I do? I used those apps and that website, as I said. Now, let me give you some numbers. So, a 35-day pass 
two parcels together would cost me £756. By getting individual tickets, this cost me £396. Yes, £396. This is a massive saving of £360, which is absolutely huge. Now, obviously, this might not be the case for everyone because everyone's trip is different. So, you might not make a saving. Do your research. That is the biggest tip I will give. Make sure you do your research before you arrive in Japan and plan your route before you get here. So, potentially, you could make a big saving. Now, if you now want to know how to get a train in Japan, if you're slightly apprehensive about that, like I was, then go to my video about how to get a train. Also, have a look at the rest of my Japan playlist, which is coming up next to my head, to see various videos, from basics videos, to things to do videos, to advice videos. Now, don't forget to like this video as well if you found this useful. If I've missed anything out, which I probably have, put it in the comments below. What's your experience with the Japan Rail Pass? Have you done that? Or did you not get one like me? So I'm in Hiroshima now, I'm off to explore Hiroshima once I get to my hospital and hopefully I'm not soaking wet by the time I get there. I'll catch you later.